You've seen progression series. Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon is the first set to be released for the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game in March 2002. But what if it was more chaotic? <laughs> That's a really good one. In this series, both Nick from Demura Tundra and myself will be cracking open a booster box or a display's worth of sealed product in every episode. However, in each episode, the sets are randomized and will likely differ from each other's. Who will be the king of chaos? Find out in Yu-Gi-Oh! Chaotic Progression. All right, guys, so I am on a one and three streak. Um, oh, I'm, pretty, no. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about spinning this wheel. Hopefully we can get a decent year. Uh, Nick, any years in particular that you're looking for? Um, 2020 wouldn't be bad. Okay. A lot of good stuff there, but I wouldn't mind going back to some early years. Probably, you know, preferably a year with a gold series in it. Maybe, you know, maybe get myself some staple spell and trap cards. Maybe. You know, I was thinking like 2005 to 2007 would be kind of cool. Early, early reprints and stuff like that would be nice. I don't know. I mind that. I guess let's go ahead and start spinning and see mm -hmm. what we get. Um, Ooh, 2016. 2016, my goodness. Destiny Soldiers is kind of cool. Break of the, Breakers of Shadow has a lot of good cards in it. Breakers of Shadow is good. Um, I would not mind Infinite Gold. That's where my BA boys are at. Oh, yeah, BA is crazy. Um, also, I think it's just got some decent staples in there. And I just realized I spelled Dragons of Legend Unleashed. Unleashed. They're free from the landlords. <laughs> Um, the G is silent. <laughs> yeah, they're free from their landlords. Unleashed. Um, yeah, so this is going to be interesting. I don't think also, that there's many things that we already have that go well with any of these sets. Yeah. Not me, that's for sure. So we're either going to be playing the same decks or having some kind of new strategy. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Oh, I agree. We'll see you then. Alrighty, already after that horrible loss, I want to get in some good packs. Now, we're on 2016, which has some decent packs and some bad ones. The problem is for, like, let's say, Shining Victories, you only want the high-end stuff. And I think that's true for most of these. I think the best pack we can possibly get is Infinite Gold. So, if I do not get my first spin, we are going to respin for it and use one of my tickets. Millennium pack. Hmm. Let me think about this. Let me see what's in there. Yeah, it says Dookie. We're gonna try again. Come on, baby. Well, I will see you with the Millennium pack, I guess. All right, guys. So today we are opening up 2016 Yu-Gi-Oh! But before we do that, let's go ahead and spin this sweet winner's wheel that we got with our one and three record. Let's go ahead and spin it and hope for the best. Wish me luck. And it's a wild card secret. So I've actually been thinking about all the cards in the set. They're all ultras. And uh, I think the best one in the set is probably Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring. Uh, it's a tuner, so it's another tuner for our deck, which is really nice. Let's go ahead and lock that in. Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring, and then come over to the 2016 wheel Wish me luck, guys. Hopefully, we can get a decent set. And it looks like we're getting Shining Victories. So, let's go ahead and check out the set and see what it's got in it. Oh, no. Let's go. Come on, time, baby! Let's go! We got Pendulums, bro. Um, okay, so, I mean, probably not the best Pendulum decks and stuff, but... I mean, it might be a relatively decent set to open. All right, before we get into our Millennium Pack, we do have our three OTS packs for losing. So because um, Infinity Chasers was winter 2019, I believe we are on OTS Pack 9, correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, three packs of this, let's see what we get. Uh, Sound Graveyard's fine, I guess. Mm, nothing great in that first one. 
Second one, uh, second light and warble, maybe? And third one. And Attackion Dragon. Cool. We could we could have gotten we could have gotten could have gotten Imperial Order. But whatever. Alright, we'll save that to the collection. And then let's move on to the Millennium Pack. So from what I understand, there are 36 packs in the Millennium Pack, even though there's only five cards per it's a very small set, so we're probably gonna get everything. And they're all bad. Like right here. Wow, I mean card my is pretty good, but like outside of that, I guess I can make use of the widespread ruin. Scapegoats aren't bad. Um, yeah, I can make Zork. Be funny. Uh, more scapegoats. Gandora. Red Eyes. Black Metal Dragon. Spicy. That's actually a good card. Who knew? Or wait, is it? No, it's a bad card. I want Darkness Metal. Ah, Shrink's a combat trick, I guess. CCD. I believe you're playing with the Errata, so it's not good anymore. Ring Destruction, also not good because of the Errata. Ah, second card of Demise. <sighs> Force Raider is better than most of the stuff I have. Black Illusion, Nightmare. Nightmare Wheel might not be horrible. Widespread, another Nightmare Wheel. Acid Trap Holes may be okay. I'm really... Oh, Relinquished. D Double Kribo. Nice. Yeah, we're gonna just be kind of going through this because there's not much to get out of here. <sighs> I hate this format. If only I had access to the true Dracos or something. I don't know. Bloop, 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 bloop. I love opening draft chaff. I love opening draft chaff. I love opening draft chaff. Yeah, so this kind of sucks. Maybe there's a few things you can throw in, but yeah, I'm not happy with this with this set. We'll see you in the deck building, I guess. 24 packs of Shining Victories. Let's go ahead and jump on into it. Hopefully we get some good stuff. We got a uh, Fusion Pack and Cattle Call. Uh, Dwarf Star Dragon. Amorphage Pride. So those, some of those Amorphages are actually really good. Uh, they are kind of like Floodgates. Uh, another Super Red Digital Bug Rhinocebus. Uh, and then Amorphage Envy. Next pack, we have ooh the the Thunder King, the Lightning Strike Kaiju, and another one of that Rhino service. I haven't seen a lot of pendulums yet though, not too too many. Um, there we get a Performa Pal, Performa Pal Shell Crab and the Ultra Rare Luna Light Panther Dancer. Um, oh, Raid Raptors are in here too. That's kind of cool. Oh, uh, we got the uh, Red Eyes Tomb Dragon. Another uh, Pain Lena. Pain, pain Anus. <laughs> pain Lanius. Um, finite Cards is a funny one. Uh, we got the Sage with the Eyes of Blue. I wasn't expecting to get any of the Blue Eyes stuff. Uh, Deskbot is in here too. I don't know if all the other ones are, but we got Luna Light stuff here. That's not too bad and we got cosmo scaredy lion and performer pal odd eyes light phoenix and then performage wrath luna light black sheep is actually pretty good here we have tuners high fusion monster Luna Light Blue Cat, Amorphage Infection, and Luna Light Tiger, Raid Raptor Vulture. I haven't seen any of the Raid Raptor like Xyz stuff. Uh, we got Envy, Cattle Call. The sad part about like the Blue Eye stuff, <laughs> another Red Eyes Toon Dragon. Is that we can't really use it because we don't have Blue Eyes White Dragon. We have Dark Magician, I think. Uh, another Amorphage and a Luna Light Cat Dancer. We're halfway through. Um, I don't see a really great strategy. 
We got another kaiju though, and then ooh, a morphage lechery. Okay, we got Cosmo Landwalker and High Speedroid Puzzle. Morphage Wrath. Uh, we got Sloth. I think that's one of the better ones, actually. That's one that I think that they were like people were um putting this in like whatever pendulum deck so that uh neither player can special summon monsters from the extra deck except for amorphid monsters. Okay, so that's actually pretty good. Um Landwalker Mausoleum of White and another Cosmo Scaredy Lion, another Painlanius. Ooh, Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon. Huh. Ooh, Amorphage Goliath is nice too. Okay, getting a lot of Amorphage stuff. Um, unfortunately, we haven't gotten a lot of Raid Raptor stuff, though. Just the one Ultimate Falcon and then all the commons and stuff. Uh, that's another Blue Eye, or Red Eyes Toon Dragon. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> Dragon Spirit of White. Okay. And another Scaredy Lion. Last and final pack. Can we get something good? Uh, we got another Goliath. Okay, that's uh, that's not too terrible. Um, I could live with that. A Goliath, a Sloth, and a bunch of the commons and stuff. So yeah, um, that that's it. I mean, that's our opening for the week. Um, All right. All right, all right, all right. Now, we got some way better than trains. Anyone who says Earth Machine is a good deck has obviously never played it before. This week, we're playing with Witchcrafters. So, Witchcrafters is a very interesting archetype that always feels like it's this close to being busted. And I think in Limited, it's going to do us really well. So, the main theme of Witchcrafters is you have the little Witchcrafters like Shmieta, uh, Puteri, and Pitore. Who are able to tribute themselves and discard a spell to special summon a witchcraft character from your deck. Usually you want to get the big ones of Adele, Hein, or Vere. And they also have an effect where you can banish them from your graveyard to do an effect. So Shmieta sends a witchcraft from my deck to the graveyard. Uh, Poteri, if I have no cards in hand, I can banish it and then target one witchcraft from my graveyard add to my hand. And Pitori, uh, banish it and I can send one witchcraft from my hand to the graveyard if I have none, banish my entire hand. And yeah, so basically, little guys bring up big guys, and very spell-focused. So let's go over the cards. DD Warrior Lady, probably still good in this format. Uh, Mythical Beast Jackal King, uh, it's a decent one tribute, and does stuff when we have spells. Uh, Sasuke, again, it's a normal summon, which we are certainly lacking. Adele is very strong, so a quick effect is card, one spell card, so I shall summon one witchcrafter from my hand, so she's a great extender. And you can tribute this card, then target one spell, cast a monster from my graveyard, accept her, special summon it. Uh, Hind probably the best one. 2400 attack. My opponent cannot target other spell caster monsters that control card effects. Quick effect, discard a spell, target one face up card my opponent controls, destroy it. Very strong limited. And of course, Madame Vera, the one everyone knows. During damage calc, if spell caster monster battles an opponent's monster, I can reveal a number of spell cards in my hand. If I do, the battling monster gains a thousand attack and defense for each card revealed until the end of turn. Quick effect, discard a spell, and negate the effects of all face up monster my control, opponent controls in the end of turn. Very good. And of course, we got the Pitore. Pautiri and Shmieta. Uh, Shmieta and Pautiri are the best ones. I think Shmieta is a little better though. Uh, Triple Scapegoat, it's a spell card and it gets us out fodder, which is really important. If we can't find any of our witchcrafters or little ones, this will just buy us some time. Uh, Secret Village, I'm playing almost all spellcasters, so this is a very strong card against my opponent, shutting off their spell cards. Spell Reproduction, uh, send two spells from my hand to the graveyard. The target one spell in my graveyard adds to my hand. Very strong for cycling spells. 
spell book of knowledge, I can send either one spell cast monster control or one spell, uh, spell book card from my hand to the graveyard. Draw two cards. Again, mostly spell cards and spell books. So, sorry, mostly spell casters and spell cards. So, I was going to draw two. Uh, Draping is very strong. I can return spell traps to my opponent's hand. And then during the end phase, if I control witchcraft or else in my graveyard, I can add this card to my hand. All the witchcraft or spell traps do this. We have collaboration. Target one witchcraft or. Re Witchcraft I control. I can make a second attack during each battle phase. Also, if it attacks this turn, my opponent cannot activate spell track cards during the end of the damage step. And of course, can they add it back to my hand? These are great because as long as I control Witchcrafter, they're infinitely cycled, so I can discard them for Witchcrafter effects as well. Trap cards, we got one Magic Cylinder because it's funny. Two Sakus, still pretty good right now. Triple Threatening Roar to stop battle phases when I don't have my big Witchcrafters out. Uh, Witchcrafter Masterpiece, I can target a spell in either graveyard with add one card the same. Name from my deck to my hand. And then, of course, I've sent to the graveyard. I can banish this, add in number of spell cards from my graveyard, special summon a witchcrafter monster from my deck whose level equals the number of spells banished after this effect. And finally, triple nightmare wheel. Target one monster my opponent controls, cannot attack or change his battle position when it leaves the field, destroy it once per turn. Turn this in mind, inflict 500 to my opponent. This is a very good burn win con and stops my opponent from attacking me when I don't have any monsters out, which I feel like might be a big theme as we don't have a ton of witchcrafters. Finally, for the side deck, we have. Triple Magician's left hand to get the effect of my opponent's first trap card. Alright guys, so here we have the deck profile for this week. We are going to be playing Amorphages. So basically, we're just trying to get the bigger guys out to floodgate the field. Uh, we have Divine Serpent, Serpent Ge here because, I mean, it's a relatively decent card. Um, then two Goliath, one Mobius, one Sloth, one Dark Dust Spirit... Two uh, Odd Eyes Light Phoenix. We have uh, two Amorphage Pride, three Wrath, one Dekoichi, one Envy, and then three Spirit Reaper. We're also running uh, Lechery. We're running one Dark Mimic and uh, two of these because they have a high uh, high scale, so that we might be able to Pendulum Summon out that Sloth. We have very few spells, <laughs> so we're running um, one Pot of Greed, a Book of Moon, Enemy Controller. Three Infection and one Ectoplasma. Unfortunately, we didn't get any of the field spell, so that really kind of sucks. <laughs> um, here we have three Raikiki Break. We have two Infinite Impermanence. Three Bad Aim. Two uh, Amorphage Lysis. And one Solemn Judgment. Finally, for the side deck, we have Lava Golem. Ash Blossom Joy Spring. Ghost Ogre. Two Ghost Bell. Two My Body. One Trap Dust Shoot, two Hedge Guard, two Gravekeeper Spy, and three Gravekeeper's Guard. Lastly, we have our extra deck, which is three Signal Warrior, two Boral uh, Load Dragon. We have our two Stardust, our two Decode, and our two Utopia. Probably could have run the three of each of them, but eh, it's whatever. Um, that being said, I think it's a relatively decent looking list, and hopefully we can pull off a win this week, because uh, Pen Best Deck. Alright guys, so here we have the games for this week. Now, unfortunately, um, we will not be having Nick here with us because I had a little mishap where I thought that I uh, actually started recording, and unfortunately I didn't. So this is Amorphage versus Witchcrafter. Uh, we're going to fast forward it. He's going to summon out his uh, Witchcrafter monster, bring out the other one by discarding the spell, I believe, and then setting the trap card. We don't have much that we could do with this hand, to be honest, so we just set a bunch of traps and then pass our turn, and then, of course, pass it back over to him, we take some damage. Um, he just proceeds to basically go all out, comboing off on us, and then he ends up bringing out his uh, Ninja Grandmaster Sasuke, he's able to attack over our defense monster. Um, we did DD, or we did Solemn the DD Warrior Lady, uh, we activate Ectoplasma, and, um... Yeah, it's un really unfortunate. We lost that first one super, super easily. Going into game number two, we go first. We set one, set one, and activate Amorphage Infection. He attacks into our Gravekeeper Spy that we sighted in. And then uh, we actually are able to get into our uh, Amorphage Sloth. He ends up uh, destroying our Gravekeeper's Guard here. And then he attacks into our other guard, which is really fortunate for us that we're able to send his monster back to his hand. Um, from here, he's able to actually add a couple of cards. Um, this this deck is just kind of crazy, honestly, in a sealed format. Uh, he brings out his 2400 beat stick and we bad aim it. 
Um, he sets his uh, uh, nightmare wheel face down, which is kind of a nightmare for us. Uh, we pendulum, we scale two pendulums, and he nightmare wheels our monster. Now, this is actually where things went a little bit awry. I did not read my cards and didn't realize that the amorphage monsters get destroyed if the amorphage slot or amorphage wrath is in the uh, the pendulum scale zone. So. Uh, I have to actually tribute one monster or destroy this card. So basically, these would have been destroyed. Um, and we wouldn't have had to worry about the Nightmare Wheels so much. So we could have won this game, but unfortunately, we did not. Um, it is what it is. I misread. I misplayed so badly. Uh, but in any case, <laughs> I'm sorry about this video. Um, I hope you guys still enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome content like this. I'm sorry that you guys pretty much waited a whole month for this to come out. And there's no actual like dual back and forth thing going on. Um, but still, thank you for watching. I hope you watched this far. And uh, I'll try to start getting these out sooner. Maybe like once a week, once every other week. Uh, just stay, stick with me. Smash the subscribe button. Smash the like button. Sign up for the pendulum training down below to become a pen god yourself. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.